Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. This week I've really been missing the warm weather. Uh, we had an amazing summer in the UK this year. So I thought I'd go back to some older footage that I took on Fistral Beach in Cornwall. And if you've watched some of my videos before, you know that I've uh, filmed here before. Uh, this last summer, as I said, was amazingly hot weather. So we were lucky enough to be able to get down to the beach a few times and I was able to create several different paintings. This week, I'm actually using a combination of uh, ink tense blocks and Atelier Interactive Acrylics. And then right at the very end, I just add a few finishing touches with some watercolor marker pens. I'll list the materials below the video though in the, in the description. So if you want to try and do something similar, then you can refer to that so you know the materials to use. So what I'm doing at the moment, as you can see, is I'm sat on the sand and I'm using an ink tense block. Um, and you can use these in the same way that you use pastels. You can use them to draw or as you can see now, I'm using the flat of the block to just shade in an area. So because of the fisheye lens on the camera I'm using, it'll probably be a little bit difficult for you to see the headland off in the distance. But the bit I'm depicting is just kind of the very edge of the rocks which are going off into the water. Now what I'm doing at the moment is I've just sprayed the ink tense block that I put down with water and now I'm using a brush to to move that color around and that's one of the great advantages of these ink tense blocks. You, they're so adaptable um, and once dry they're completely waterproof so they've got many of the advantages of watercolor, many of the advantages of pastel, many of the advantages of acrylic. And this is one of the first times that I actually combined the ink tents with acrylic paint. So, um, you know, it's been a really interesting experience for me. Now, I'm just putting in a hint of purple off in the horizon, the, the water down at Newquay. There's often a hint of purple off in the distance. So that's what I'm adding at the moment and just blending that with the brush. And now switching to an orange ink tents block and some yellow overlaid on top of that to start to create a patch of sand. Now, as I said, um, my intention is to depict a figure in this in this seascape painting. So there will be a surfer kind of walking away from the water back up the sand eventually. But for now, I'm just blocking in, having put in my initial line work, I'm blocking in using the ink tense blocks and the water spray and a clean brush. It's just allowing me to move that pigment around, move the colors around and put on these rather wonderful washes of color with, uh, with a variety of textures. Switching to a darker blue now. So this is going to be an area of wet sand. So the, the sky is reflecting in, in the sand. And in general, reflections are a darker version of the color they're reflecting. So if you've got a pale sky above, you'll usually find that the reflection is a, is a darker blue than that of the sky. The board I'm using here is uh, the Mixed Media Board by Dala Rowney. So this is the same surface as the Mixed Media Paper that I sometimes use, uh, but it's bonded to a piece of uh, rigid board. And I'm using an A3 size here. And these are perfect for painting outside because as it happens, this is a particularly calm day. But if it was uh, you know, windy or gusty, then the boards are really good because they don't flap around in the breeze. And as you can see, I'm adding some deeper blues now. If you look off in the distance, you can see the color of the sea. Uh, so the original pale greens and the, and the purple, they were, they were an underlayer. There are definitely hints of those colors in the sea, but I realized I needed to make it somewhat darker. So having put down the ink tense block uh, colors as the initial layers, I've now switched to the interactive acrylics. And you know, if you've, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know how much I love these paints. I use them all the time. They're very, very uh, adaptable and you can be really expressive with them. So I'm using a mixture of titanium white and silurium blue at the moment. And I'm using that to block in the sky, this wonderful clear blue. I mean, there are a few clouds today, but uh, pretty amazing, pretty amazing day down at the beach at Newquay here. And notice that I'm making the, the blue a darker blue near the top of the painting and blending that to a lighter blue as we come down near the horizon.
So my brush strokes here are in general horizontal. Uh, and that, that's, a, that's generally speaking a good tip when you're painting a sky with acrylic. Uh, but you know, if you blend things, you can, you can get away with going in different directions. And what I'm doing just there with the, dip, with the darker blue is trying to just straighten out the horizon. Sometimes when I go to paint a horizon line, and especially if I'm working outdoors, you know, sometimes you can get a little bit of a, wob a wobble in there. Sometimes it could be at a slight angle. So it's, it's best if you can to, to make it horizontal and straight. But, you know, we do what we can when we're sat on the beach. That's, that's part of the fun. Part of the challenge is to, to live with those little imperfections, which result from the fact you, you're not inside a studio. And, you know, generally speaking, you don't have that long. Although we often think of landscapes as being stationary, you, you know, the light is always changing. And if you're doing a seascape, obviously the, the, the water's always moving. The tide is coming in and out. People are moving around on the beach. Areas of sand which were wet are drying up. You know, so there's a lot of movement going on in terms of changing light and colour. Uh, so, and that's a really good fun aspect of, of painting down at the beach as well. So I'm using kind of a brown colour now, uh, mixed with quite a bit of uh, titanium white. And I was using that to just block in some of the, the rocks that, I, that you can see off in the distance there. And I did that initially with a bit of a dry brush, but I'm coming in a little bit heavier now with the paint. The idea being to layer different textures and different colours to try and simulate some of the varying textures that you have on the cliff faces and on the rocks, but without having to go into the rather laborious process of depicting every little nook and cranny. As you can see, I'm using a, a flat brush here today and Typically, I will use flat brushes for most of my paintings. At the very end, I might switch to a small round brush for some details, but I find the flat brush is really adaptable. And as you can see, I'm just kind of feathering in a, a little line, a narrow line there, but then with a slight change of direction, I can put down a thicker mark. So, you know, for, for very loose, impressionist, outdoor work, a flat brush is di difficult to beat, I think, for me. So I'm laying in some of the darker shadows now, where the rocks meet the water. Sorry about the little bit of noise there. The, the camera's uh, mounted on a headband, uh, which is on, to, on my head, but because it's such a hot day, I'm wearing a hat to, you know, obviously to keep the sun off the top of my head. And I think what's happening there is as I'm moving, the camera's rubbing against the brim of the hat, and that's coming over a little bit, uh, a little bit crunchy on the microphone. But this dark colour I'm using at the moment, it's kind of a purple, really, purpley brown. So I've mixed that up with cadmium red, ultramarine blue, and I've probably added a little bit of burnt umber in there as well. So gradually building up the layers on these rocks, picking out little regions of shadow, little regions of light, and very much treating the structure as a pattern of darks and lights and mid-tones. And varying the pressure, I apply, I apply the brush to the, to the painting to control how textured a mark I get. And one of the things which keeps drawing me back to, to the Cornish coast and, you know, there's nothing new here. Artists have, have been finding this for, you know, well, I imagine hundreds and hundreds of years. But the, cult, the, the range of colours down at the coast in Cornwall, absolutely amazing. And, you know, ch so changeable as well. The, uh, you know, if you ever get, get the chance to catch a sunset uh, in Cornwall, on the you know, north shore of Cornwall, pretty, pretty amazing experience, actually. Um, yeah, the way the, the light reflects off the water with the waves crashing in. It really, it really is uh, something to see. Well, we can see that the, the painting is starting to take shape now. Notice I'm using the, uh, the board orientated in a, in a portrait orientation, which is you know, slightly outside of convention. Normally when we paint seascapes, you, it would be rotated 90 degrees from its current orientation. But I quite like tall, narrow paintings sometimes. Um, not just if I'm doing portrait work, I'll often, for my animal paintings, I will often set those up in a portrait 
orientation or often even a much taller and narrower composition. And I need to get around to doing some landscapes in a very tall and narrow composition, actually. That's uh, just reminded myself. But um, but in, in this situation, I really quite like the narrow window you've got on the landscape. It really makes you sort of think, OK, what am I going to include here as I as I look from left to right across this you know, expanse of sand and sea? There's, there's a lot of information there. So by keeping things a little narrower and a little more confined, it's a bit easier to sort of just select, right, I'm going to paint this bit. Coming back in with the blue now to just begin to add some of the reflections in the water, so or the reflections of the rocks in the water. And I'm keeping my brush strokes, you know, fairly simple, really. The, the first layer of, of colour that I put down with the ink tense blocks and the acrylic, uh, you know, just very sort of smooth brush strokes to just block in those areas, for the most part at least. A little bit of texture on the sand. And now with the rocks and stuff, what I'm doing is, is keeping sort of a patchwork pattern of, um, of brush strokes. So I try to keep in mind how am I going to vary the textures across the painting. And, you know, obviously you know, we, always, we always think of how we're going to vary the tone or the colour or the line, uh, but I also try to think about varying texture as well. I'm starting to put in some shadows now on the water to indicate the presence of waves rolling in towards the shore, doing that with a deeper green than I used previously. And now coming in with some thin lines, again just with the flat brush but sweeping it side to side, with a deep bluey purple. So often when you look at the shallow water of the sea, uh, as it laps in, there will be, be these quite deep shadows, quite deep narrow shadows, as the different layers of water roll in on top of each other. And there are quite a lot of different colours within those shadows as well. But switching to uh, a, light, a light blue now, just popping in some white water on top of the, the shadow regions that I use for the waves. And again, using the flat brush, you know, we don't just have to apply it in a conventional way. We can kind of twist the brush and rotate it, cause the bristles to splay out, you know, really kind of have some fun experimenting with compressing the brush, flicking the brush, tapping it onto the surface of the painting, long sweeps, dry brush, you know, a whole range of uh, different techniques that we can use with just one brush to get a huge variety of marks. So re it really is an expressive little piece of equipment. So you can see me looking back and forth here. And one of the things I'm considering as I look from seascape to painting and back again is where am I going to place the figure within the composition. And a, a good general bit of advice, I think, is to avoid placing that figure or the focus of your painting, whether it's a person or an animal, to avoid the very center of your composition. It's generally better to have things a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and a little bit above or below center. Now, the position you choose is obviously going to depend on the effect you want to get and you know what's going on around that central focus so f for this one i think you know or well, my plan is to end up putting the figure kind of off to the left a little bit to give him some sp he's going to be walking away from the water to to the right so we want to give him some space to continue his journey if you like you can see i'm just dragging some slightly thicker paint now another orangey brown mix to add a little extra dimension to that patch of sand and I'm using that same colour to go over the the area of wet sand that I put down right at the beginning of the painting and I'm dragging that uh, in a dry brush style over the wet sand to create a multi-layered effect and you know help to suggest this sort of patchwork you get when water evaporates from a wet beach it doesn't do so evenly so you obviously get big patches of wet sand and big patches of dry, but within those, there are lots and lots of little kind of little puddles of water and little patches of 
dry sand just just appearing. But I'm starting to put in the silhouette of my figure now. And again, yeah, you know, we were talking about movement with seascapes before. So here's another example. Although there were plenty of surfers and plenty of people on the beach today, although I have to admit for Fistral in the summer, this is actually pretty quiet. Um, you know, these people aren't going to stay still for you to, to paint. So you're having to make general observations. You know, I might be looking at a particular guy as he walks up the beach. But then by the time I look back, he's perhaps moved and I'm looking at somebody else. So I'm having to make some sort of general approximations here. I don't know if you noticed, but that little measurement I did with the handle of the paintbrush, what I was doing was just comparing the height of my figure to the length of the surfboard, because a surfboard is typically around about six feet long. So I wanted the two to be about the same length on my on my painting, just to ensure that uh, the proportions you know, are reasonably good. And what I'm doing now is just trying to judge where should I place the reflections within the wet sand. And you can see I'm just doing that by adding a little patchwork of brush strokes. So if you imagine a completely still body of water and a man standing on the shore of that body of water, his reflection would be almost mirror-like because, you know, the, the water is completely calm. And the water here is also calm because it's just wet sand, but it's not very deep, you know, and, and so this kind of some of the sand is coming through and affecting the reflection. And, you know, there's probably a bit of sea breeze causing some ripples. People have walked through the water, all that kind of stuff. So it's not a pure, clean, mirror-like reflection that we expect to see. Just adding in some highlights on the wet sand now to add to that illusion of reflection. And I wanted to add just a little hint of a logo or something on the surfboard, which is just that little pop of orange on the red board there, just to, you know, give a little bit more focus. So I'm keeping the treatment of the figure the same as the simple loose treatment for the seascape. You know, this isn't going to be a detailed workup of a painting. It's simply, you know, my response while sitting on the sand to being at Fistral Beach and watching the surfers walk from the water up the beach. So keeping things fairly loose and fairly simple to just depict a feeling really. So I'm just kind of cleaning up the edges of the board now. And here's a closer look at the finished painting. You can see that it's pretty much exactly as it was down at the beach. The only thing I changed once I got home was that I've added a few lines using watercolour marker pen to add a little bit more definition here and there and add a bit of a little bit of perspective as well. But this is a loose depiction of a surfer walking back from the water back up the beach at Fistral Beach in Cornwall. So that's pretty much it for this video. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.